We're going to practice assigning R and S stereochemistry to the chiral carbons in these three molecules. Here's a summary of the three steps that we take to assign R and S. If this is your first time practicing R and S, I encourage you to back up a video to my previous video where I go through these steps with more detail. In this video, we're, we're going to assume that you understand what each of these three steps are. So starting with this molecule right here, our first job is to prioritize each of the four things attached to the chiral carbon. Again, we do that based on atomic number. So we have a hydrogen and a chlorine. And remember that we are uh, focusing on the atom that's directly attached to the chiral carbon. So this is a carbon with three hydrogens on it. So we're focusing on a carbon. And this right here is also a carbon. So over here, I'm going to do some erasing. Um, this is also a carbon. This carbon has two hydrogens and it has a CH3. So we're comparing a hydrogen to a chlorine to a couple of carbons. And this prioritization, atomic number, if you don't have them memorized, which I don't, we're going to look at the periodic table. Hydrogen is the lowest atomic number, so that's the lowest priority, and then reading across the periodic table, next is carbon, and then we'll come to chlorine. So chlorine is going to be our highest priority substituent. I like to give that a one, and hydrogen is our lowest priority substituent, and then what we have left are two carbons, and they are equal in terms of prioritization. So how do we break the tie and prioritize one over the other? Remember, this is only based on atomic number. It is not based on mass, so you cannot say, well, this is heavier, so it should get a higher priority. Don't, don't do that. That's not how we do this. When there is a tie between two atoms or three atoms that are attached to the chiral carbon, then what we have to do is move out to the next level and compare the atoms that are attached to the atoms that are in the tie. So we are looking at what is attached to these two carbon atoms. The one on the left is a carbon atom that's attached to three hydrogens. One, two, three hydrogens. We're not recounting this guy. And this carbon over here is attached to one, two hydrogens, and a carbon. So over here, we have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a carbon. And what we're doing now is comparing these three atoms to these three atoms, again, using the same rules, prioritizing based on atomic number. Because carbon has a higher atomic number than any of the other atoms that we're comparing at this time, this substituent, this substituent is higher priority than this substituent. I know that that's a confusing concept, so we're gonna practice it several times. So now we have our substituents prioritized. Remember what we want to do is ignore, I'm not gonna erase it this time, but ignore number four. We're ignoring this guy over here for a minute, and we're looking at the pattern from one to two to three. When we connect one to two to three, that is kind of looking like an R, so that means that this molecule has the R stereochemistry. Let's just keep on practicing. Next molecule over here, here is our chiral carbon. Sometimes um, when there's a hydrogen attached to the chiral carbon, that hydrogen will not be drawn because remember in line structure, we don't always show the hydrogen atoms that are attached to carbon. So sometimes we have to fill that hydrogen in and let's set about prioritizing the four things that are attached to our chiral carbon. Hopefully you've seen enough examples to know that hydrogen is always going to be low priority. We're comparing oxygen to carbon to carbon. Let's look at the periodic table. Oxygen has a higher atomic number than carbon, eight versus six. So that means oxygen is going to be 
our highest priority substituent, and then we have a carbon versus a carbon. Now, this is exactly the same as the last example that we did, but I'm gonna walk through the steps anyways. So we have a carbon versus a carbon. When there is a tie, we ask ourselves, what's, what's attached to this carbon? This carbon has three hydrogens on it. So over here, we have a hydrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen and what's on this carbon this carbon has a hydrogen a hydrogen and another carbon hydrogen 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 versus hydrogen hydrogen carbon again looking at atomic number of all six of these atoms this is the highest atomic number which means that this is the higher priority substituent so this will be a number two and this will be a number three and if we ignore substituent number four and connect from one to two to three there's an r <laughs> that again is another r molecule so we have one more example to look at here is our chiral carbon again the hydrogen is not being shown so let's go ahead and draw that in and you know i want to tell you when you're drawing these hydrogens in um, it, it kind of matters where you draw them. So it's actually incorrect to draw your hydrogen up here in this position. The rule of drawing these molecules is that the straight line bonds have to be adjacent to each other with nothing in between them. And the wedge and dash bonds also have to be adjacent to each other with nothing in between them. So you could draw it on the left side or the right side, but the important part is you can't separate the two straight line bonds with a wedge or a dash. So here is our chiral carbon, and this guy has a carbon, a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. So we know that our hydrogen is going to be the low priority. That'll be number four. And we've got a three-way tie between these three carbons. So we've got to figure out what's attached to each one. This carbon has three hydrogens on it. So it is a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This carbon has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and another carbon. So that is, this guy here is a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. And this carbon has a carbon and two hydrogens. So carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So looks like we're in uh, another situation because we have another tie. We have three sets of atoms. The highest atomic number is carbon, which means that one of these two substituents, either this one or this one, is high priority. We know that this one has, has lost the battle. It is a low priority substituent, so this, this substituent right here is going to be number three. And one of these will be number one and one will be number two. We're not sure which is which. To settle this dispute, we have to move out one more level. So we looked at this particular atom, we analyzed this atom, and that atom, carbon versus carbon, was a tie. And then we uh, asked ourselves, okay, what's attached to this carbon? So this was level number two, where we were looking here, like that, and that was still a tie. So now what we do is move out to the second carbon down the chain and we compare these two carbons to each other. This is a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And this guy is a hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. So in our second level of comparison, which I'm gonna do in a different color, we have a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen versus again, a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen is lower priority than carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. This is starting to sound like a tongue twister. So that means that this substituent will be number two and this substituent will be number one. And I know that it's super tempting 
to just say, why can't we just do this by mass? Because this is clearly the heaviest, and this is the second heaviest, and this is the third heaviest, and this is the lightest. Uh, and a lot of times it works just as well to do this by mass as it does by atomic number, but not all the time. And that's why you can't you can't just use mass. You have to go by atomic number. So we have this difficult one prioritized. Let's ignore number four and let's look at the connection from one to two to three. From one to two to three is a big S. So this very tricky molecule has the S stereochemistry.